Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle, and we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2003 rom-com How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days with our guest, Kat Quinn. Welcome, Kat. Thank you. I can't wait to talk all things How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. (laughs) If you haven't checked out our interview with Kat, pause go back and listen. It's very interesting. And you get to know a little bit about Kat. But before we dive into the movie, let's get into some housekeeping. housekeeping. If you love the (laughs) podcast and you want to support us, here's a few ways you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? Like this review from nray713. Gotta binge this now. Started listening because of my big fat Greek wedding episode. That movie has such a special place in my heart. I have a huge Hispanic family. What I love about listening to you guys is that it sounds like the conversations my friends and I have about movies. If you'd like to be featured like NRA 713 and help us grow, head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. I love when we get reviews. It makes me so happy. Me too. (laughs) And don't forget to subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. It will alert you when a new episode is live. And we have merch. Head on over to nomorelatefees.redbubble.com. Check us out. We just got a notification that pet bowls are available. So (laughs) cheers. This is perfect because I want to buy a puppy. And so then I will buy swag. All the things. We should get one for Crawl the Warrior. (gasps) Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) We'll just Uh, superimpose a little bandana. No more late fees bandana and pit bull. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And if you have been sitting under a rock, I'm going to go into a little synopsis of the movie. It's the battle of wills when columnist Andy needs to prove she can dump a guy in 10 days, whereas advertiser Ben needs to prove he can win a girl in 10 days. Now, the clock is ticking to see if they can conquer each other or if love will conquer them. I actually like that synopsis this week. It was excellent. Uh, Thanks. I stole some of it and I wrote some of it. I'll let you guess which parts are which. That was great. You should be a columnist for Composure Magazine. God, I I keep sending my resume and it keeps Uh, bouncing back. I don't know what's going on. Danielle would be the queen of listicles. I would. I'm really, I'm really good at lists, hence our social media content. (laughs) The movie stars Kate Hudson, Matthew McConaughey, Adam Goldberg, Michelle, Shalom Harlow, Catherine Hahn, and B.B. Newworth. And it was directed by Donald Petrie. The screenplay is by Kristen Buckley, Brian Regan, and Burr Steers. You can watch it on Pluto currently. As you guys know, this is constantly changing. So don't get mad at us if you are listening like five years later and it's not there anymore. We try. But before we get started, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five-day rental. Would watch again. Two-day rental. Mm, Okay, but nothing to write home about. Same-day rental. As dead as a love fern. Pure (laughs) trash. (laughs) That was you excellent. let it die. <laughs> Are you going to let our love die? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kat, we'll start with you. What is your Y2K rating? Or This is my favorite movie of all time. It's the best thing I'd ever seen in my life. Okay. Would buy it. Yes. <laughs> and my dad never let us buy movies. We could only rent them. He was very oh against gosh. buying movies because he felt like we shouldn't watch movies over and over again. We should try new ones. But I would buy this and hide it from him and watch it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I think my parents were the opposite. Like, I'm not spending all this money on rentals. You go ahead and go work at Blockbuster and get it for free. <laughs> I'm definitely a would buy it. Jackie? Would buy. I owned it. I watched 
it all the time. It's a contender, y'all. It is a contender. So when everybody rates it the same, we're excited at our end of the year, we can call it. Employee picks of 2022. There you go. So I feel so excited. (laughs) So let's dive into the box office. I don't have a, a lot of fun anecdotes this week, but it had a $50 million budget and it made over $177 million worldwide. So no surprise there. Is this Kate Hudson's first rom-com? I think it's Matthew so. McConaughey's for sure. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it is because she had just done like she was doing all those indie movies and she ensemble pieces. Almost famous. I yeah. Guess. And almost famous is actually what got her this job because she had just Finish that movie and getting a, I don't know if a Golden Globe nomination for it, I believe. Yes. Yeah, Golden Globe. And it still makes so much money to this day. I heard Matthew McConaughey on a podcast or a YouTube episode saying that he has this thing called mailbox money, which are his projects where like money will come in the mail from residuals. And he says this by far, he gets the most residuals from because people continue to watch it and rewatch it. That is awesome. And there's another actor who he actually does it on TikTok. The it's guy, um, Dante. He categorizes it by what kind of meal he could get from the check, which is kind of cool. So he's like, if it's just, you know, something fast food or he can get like a steak dinner. So I love watching him open those checks. I, I'm invested as if it's like my money as well. He's really oh, fun. I have to follow him. That's yeah. so fun. It's amazing. His name's Dante Basco, oh. obviously Rufio in Hook, but he's been acting since the early 80s and he'll show clips of the show that the residual check was from. Yeah. Like, oh, I was in like this one scene and I can buy a burrito at Taco Bell. It's yeah. really fun to see him open up his residual checks. I love him so much. I'm a huge Avatar, Last Airbender, the cartoon. And he is the voice of Zuko. And he's also a voice actor too, which is great. Mm-hmm. So he just has so many iconic roles and I just love him. He just seems like a cool guy. Like he'd be cool to hang out with in real life. Yeah. You will be on our <laughs> show one day. <laughs> are we, Let's are dive we, in, Jackie. You ready? So that's a, well, we have to get to Composure first. That is the magazine that Andy Anderson works for. And the opening sequence is kind of all of her different how-to articles. So she is the how-to girl, not what she, what? Well, when you're, there's, okay, there's some fun stuff that happens when they're showing all those magazine articles. One, we get a very cool cameo of Katherine Heigl. That's right. She was a teen model, so not surprised that she shows up here there's also a misspelling in one of the articles that pop up it says loose instead of lose which somebody should have caught it Um, definitely that would never fly (laughs) never also do you remember like I feel like when she feng shuied her apartment that was like such the thing everyone was like oh I need to feng shui my like teenage room (laughs) yes (laughs) and I that Pratt fall that she does while feng shuiing her room like it, it's one of those clips that like lives rent free in my head <laughs> me too <laughs> like I, I don't know why there are certain things from certain movies that just play on a constant repeat and that Pratt fall is one of them I really did not pay attention to this opening sequence until I knew we had to do it for the movie and I feel like I've been missing out all these years yeah damn you were okay, that's, lo- that's losing out. Losing <laughs> out. I'm losing out. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Thank you. So we find out this is not Andy's dream job. She's kind of doing it to get exposure, but she really wants to write really impact right about articles. things that matter exactly. I don't, don't understand this. <laughs> I was like, this was. I don't have many issues with her character, but I was like, girl, bye. What are we talking about? We're writing listicles. We are dating. We are testing out free products. Like what, what things about the world? The world's depressing. Do this fun stuff. I love. Agreed. It was so, everything she got to write about was so fun. She got to leave at hours on end to do these amazing, you know, experiments. 
sounded great and expense yeah. it all yeah and expense it all and also <laughs> she's 23 she was she was bugging out like I'm <laughs> we sorry. all were though we all were at 23 we all were like what are we gonna do this is what I want to do so I, I get that but yeah looking back it's like oh wow yeah she, she wanted to river. be <laughs> she wanted to be Michelle Pfeiffer and up close and personal is what she strove oh, to that's be. a good one <laughs> <laughs> yes, but she didn't have a rubber record, so she needed to sit her ass down and be real happy with what she got, which is mix <laughs> tickets and and diamonds yeah. and all sorts of stuff. Ridiculous. Yeah, the, so she gets Nick's the Knicks are in the playoffs. Very important, vital plot point. As a New Yorker, film. they're always close to the playoffs or in the playoffs <laughs> and the, those bitches haven't done shit I'm sorry <laughs> it hurts my soul to say this but like I need them to get it together you know <laughs> we don't even have a curse you know what I mean like we don't have a curse so what's the problem I, I know that's remember I used to wear my Knicks jersey almost like every day in high school you did <laughs> you still have this I I don't know. It's probably in my mom somewhere. She keeps yeah. everything. So I wouldn't be surprised. I hope you do. And then we can do a fashion show with my I son, can't Phoenix Suns jersey. You didn't ask for them like a 2XL for no reason. These boobs have gotten <laughs> way bigger over the years. There's no way I can like drape it over my head. Maybe. <laughs> so I will, I will say that I had a job very similar to Andy's when I was 23. I worked at Allure magazine, not composure, but similar, <laughs> both in the Condé Nast building. Cause I see her walking into the Condé Nast building and a lot of those things actually do happen it is like oh so and so got some free tickets to this game for an editor he can't go do you want to go so like you as the assistant would go or like the free samples I think in the movie is from Revlon like the free samples very much a thing borrowing clothes from the fashion closet very much a thing so those little like details are fun you're making no money but you have this like really fun glamorous life it's the perks it's yes. kind of like why you do it. It is really cool that Kate Hudson got to shadow Anna Wintour. Wintour? Yes. Which I mean, like who gets to do that, right? Amazing. Yeah. And definitely before Devil Wears product came out. So they were like, yeah, sure. Come on in. And now they'd probably be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure Kate had some connections. Uh, Elle and I have been following Kate Hudson's career since the beginning. One of her very first movies we were obsessed with and then she was in 200 cigarettes and so like Kate Hudson holds a very special place in our hearts <laughs> when, yeah. when, when Kat was trying to figure out what movie we were gonna do she gave me two choices and I was like oh it's gonna be how to lose a guy in 10 days <laughs> like I don't even have to ask Jackie she loves Kate Hudson so yeah, yeah. <laughs> her makeup artist for the film Ronnie Spector talked to me and she said that she is just like bubbling champagne like that's really how <sighs> she is she's so sweet I also think the fact that like she works with a lot of the same people from project to project so so her makeup artist her hairstylist Catherine Blondell who also worked with her mom Goldie Hawn like through the 80s I think that it says a lot when you have the same team sticking with you on every project they they love to spend time with you and you're genuinely like a good person yeah we good heard, woman. I mean we had a director of 200 cigarettes on and she just said that she was just super sweet and nice and I thought that was nice like you don't always get that you want your favorite stars to be as nice as they seem on screen you know yeah yes and I think what makes this movie so great is the chemistry, obviously, between Kate Hudson and, and Matthew McConaughey. They seem like they're best friends, but also that they're in love as, at the same time. It, it's it's very rare to find that chemistry. I think Matthew McConaughey has that per personality. Almost every lead actress he works with, they love him to death. But there's just something about these two that, hence why we got a second movie and why they probably would do a third together because mm -hmm. they just they have it you know they have it <laughs> that have scene it. where they meet in the bar and they're just <sighs> speaking in one words oh mm -hmm. my gosh 
<laughs> I, I wrote like, down the entire scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like paused it and wrote down the entire dialogue because it was, I don't know, <laughs> just in case I needed it. But the cool thing about this movie is how much so many things were improvised. The director yes. would go and whisper to one of the actors and not tell the rest. So I I wonder if even that scene might have been something that wasn't scripted, but just like them feeding off of each other. Oh, chef's kiss, really. <laughs> so good. So Andy also has two friends that she works with. Catherine Holland. I love her so much. <sighs> it's her first so, big role. It's so crazy that like you go back and you watch some movies and you're like, wait a minute, that person's in it because they weren't famous yet. And like, I'm sorry, I'm not buying Catherine Hahn as being the schluppy friend. Like, what? Not at no. all. And, but this is where my love affair with Catherine Hahn started. Like, she, yeah, I was like, how is she not in a larger role? Like, who is this like little witty, like sparkling gem hidden <laughs> in this movie? And they try to make her dowdy and desperate. And I'm just like you shine on Catherine. She's so <laughs> and now <great>. she did. <laughs> and we just didn't even know how funny she was. Like she yes. didn't really get a chance to spread her wings, but that green sweater that, that Andy comes to bring to her house. Cause Michelle is not at work. They, mm-hmm. they were about to have a meeting. She's not at work. So they already know that it's time to go get her and they steal some stuff to like perk her up and get her ass to work. But that green sweater sits in my brain forever like (laughs) I love I I think I have like three or four sweaters that are that green and every time I see it on a rack I think of this movie and I'm like I need it (laughs) I need it because it made her day better and it's gonna make my day better and it looks really good on my complexion just saying oh yeah (laughs) oh no it's such a like specific shade of green it's it really pops there's a deleted scene too where Catherine gets her a skirt like she she goes to help cheer up Kate who's in bed because she's mourning her lost relationship with Ben and she takes her a suede skirt that she then wears but didn't make it into the film oh I need to look at my DVD extras I watched on streaming I really need to fix my DVD players so that I can watch these because I think there's so many gems that we don't get anymore and I would love to sit and be able to watch a lot of these with the commentary on especially the ones I've seen so many times just to get that insight of how the cast and crew felt as the movie was being made I I mean I know we've talked about the chemistry between Matthew and Kate Hudson but originally there was a different director attached and they were what that director was Gwyneth Paltrow I don't think this movie would have been this movie if she was the one in it no hate to her but it just like these two chemistry I I don't know chemistry and comedic Kate's, timing. Kate's comedic timing and yeah. probably the improv improv that she does and playing off of Matthew McConaughey like she just has that natural ability and it doesn't feel forced no it not feels at all. so natural and I just don't think Gwyneth that's not one of her skills no she actually went on to do view from the top instead because Mike Newell was taking too long he was the original director he was taking too long to like set a date and she's like I gotta I gotta get I gotta get working so bye I'm sure when this movie came out she was kicking herself 100% So Andy goes in and gets her bestie and then they have their meeting with their boss and their boss is just kind of like, I really don't care, but I'm going to like pretend that I do about your plight because (laughs) she's like, I broke up with my boyfriend and she's sad. And that's where Andy jumps in to save her friend because they want to really write an article about her having a disastrous love life, essentially. And that's where Andy gets it, that she's going to try to find a guy and lose them in 10 days doing all the do nots. And at the same time, well, and we're kind of going back and forth because we do see Ben, we are introduced to him and his lifestyle. He rolls up in his motorcycle, which Matthew McConaughey got a motorcycle because of this movie. He wanted to look comfortable when he was shooting the movie. 
And I think that's what started his love affair with motorcycles. So that's kind of cool. Yet, yeah, so we see. <laughs> Why was there such a gap? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, hello. <laughs> Give me processing time, Danielle. I'm sorry. Usually you, you grab I think we were, all, we were all just thinking about Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, we were all just daydreaming for a second about Matthew McConaughey <laughs> riding a motorcycle. And the scene where he teaches her how to ride a motorcycle, <sighs> which is so, so cute. Oh, I would strap, like you wouldn't have to tell me <laughs> twice to hop on on the back with him. <laughs> Even with the goofy helmet? <laughs> like Andy said, Others might look goofy, but not me. I look great. <laughs> we do see Matthew showing up. He meets his other coworkers, this team. They're called the Judys. They both have the first name Judy. And there is a diamond company, the Delauer Diamond Company, that is hiring their advertising firm to create a new campaign. And so Ben, Matthew McConaughey's character, is kind of in like the bro division he does the the athletic wear he does the beer all of that advertising these ladies typically do more of the fashion side and so oh, the yes luxury. and this very much is like a real thing that happens when you're in agency life like you start to get your segments of what you do and it's very rare you can kind of switch over like when I was an agency I did a lot of food <laughs> <laughs> it was, and I did, I did have a beauty client. I had a makeup client for a second there, but you, you have your avenues and to like kind of switch, especially if somebody is like, that's their thing. It's, it could be real catty if you try to like go step into that arena. And Ben so, does, because this is going to be the large client for the ad firm. So he he's looking to make some bank. Well, also he pitched it. So that's like the other, yeah. the unwritten rule. Like when you pitch a client or bring them in or bring it to the attention of your boss, you usually have like first dibs to put the presentation together to try to close it. So it's kind of, crazy that the Judy's get it automatically and a shout out to Michael Michelle because when I was growing up I thought one it's so cool she has a first name that's like a guy's name and I just thought she was the most beautiful thing ever she's oh, so she cool is. in this movie she, she is. is so cool but this movie also gives me anxiety because it reminds me that this was a time period where thin was in kind of situation mm -hmm. And yes. I know like they're talking about it right now, that trending that we're probably going towards that again. And I'm like, hell no. no, no. They were so like, if you look at every single person in this movie, they're extremely thin from the female perspective, at least. Oh yeah. yeah. And the fat phobia is very thinly veiled. It's yes. not even veiled at all. No. It, it's yeah. right out there in the first, in the first cover line. And yeah, that's definitely really disappointing to look back on and also to like remember that time of just how ingrained that was both in magazines that we were reading and in life. And yeah, that's a huge thing that came up when watching it for sure. I go back and look at pictures and I just remember thinking I was so overweight and so mm -hmm. big and I was like, I had huge boobs, but I was thin. I was like, well, what mm -hmm. were you thinking oh I would go back to that body in a hot second <laughs> yeah yeah it's hard to rewatch those things and yeah. to, it's encouraging to see that we've come some ways but at the same time it's like there's still a lot to go <laughs> and there's like you know it's we may not be seeing it in magazines anymore but are we feeding it through TikTok like is it yeah. going through Instagram like the Pinterest, et cetera. And so it's definitely something that, you know, I, I'm curious what the next generation watching movies 20 years from now will look at in our films right. and be horrified by. I, I do love from a social media trend that we have moved like TikTok. One of the things that makes it great is that it's unfiltered and people are like in their bonnets, they're in their moo-moos, you know, all of my essentials and just going <laughs> on their camera and not caring where we were coming out of the aesthetic with the Instagram aesthetic where everything had to look so polished and 
you know, your squares had to be beautiful. And I think that's one of my favorite things about TikTok. And I, I really hope that it doesn't steer into a different direction where we're trying to get that polished look again, because that this is great to be that authentic. So maybe it is better for kids this in this generation. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I do like, I do appreciate the TikToks where it's kind of like women talking about how we're kind of going into that, like thin is in, and they're like completely rejecting it. They're like, no, yes. we're not putting that, that on this generation where we, we will not yes. stand for that. So I, I really do appreciate those, those creators that are taking that stand and saying like, no, the, the emotional damage is too much yeah, it, yeah. it's and it's a, it's it's shooting from a misogyny standpoint because it's mm -hmm. control right like it puts us all in that thought process that we're not enough mm -hmm. that our bodies are for a gaze instead of mm -hmm. you know for strength for health where Longevity. you know the way that Yes. Right. To, to house babies, you know, all those things, instead of looking at it from how someone is going to view us. And I think we all have to do that inner work, especially us mm -hmm. in our generation, because we, you know, those things didn't go away. We just are becoming more aware, but we have to have conversations about it. We have to think of our self-talk, the things that we're even mm -hmm. saying to ourselves, because it's just so much easier to just slip back into that really quickly. And uh, I, I definitely personally don't want to see that. <laughs> and I think it's a whole, you know, one of the loudest voices, at least celebrity wise of someone kind of rejecting all of that and calling it out when they see kind of that misogynistic view of beauty standards is Jamila Jamil. Like she doesn't give a shit. She's struggled with self-image and disordered eating. And so I just really appreciate her authenticity when she comes out and just calls people out for like the tummy teas and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, so, and we all have to do the work. Cause like mm -hmm. we have her, but like, like we cannot let Lizzo carry the entire, I know Lizzo is another great one. Yeah. I feel, I really do feel for her because like, you know, she's showing so much strength and it's annoying when people like when she just like shows her body people say she's brave like right. ew, why is that brave to just be yourself and mm -hmm. the the way that men attack her and these like health guru fitness people attack her to say that she's portraying a horrible health perspective and all this other crap when skinny is not health healthy mm -hmm. You know, you haven't seen her blood work. Like, what, what are we, what are we talking about? Why can't people just be? And the only way to like push against that is to be yourself, to not fall into it. Don't fight, you know, not falling into diet fads. And mm -hmm. if you want to lose weight for your own self, then do it. But, you know, it's just, it's insanity. And it's in every aspect of our culture, which is so crazy, you know? And I think it's, I think it's something that we have to talk about because if you don't talk about it, then that's how it seeps in and that's how it becomes the normal and it comes back. We all have to, you know, talk about it and make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. Some 2000s trends can come back. We'll, we'll accept lip gloss and maybe low rise <laughs> jeans, but body shaving, we are leaving in the 2000s yep. is not welcome. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna wear belong. my low rise <laughs> jeans and my crack is going to be hanging out and we're all going to yes. just love it. I love it. Well, you just have to get the thongs so you can do a little whale tail coming out the back. Yes. It'll be fine. Manny it's coming back, y'all. It's coming back. <laughs> whale tail's coming back. God. <laughs> so Andy has a conversation with Michelle, her friend who kind of drives men away. And Kind of is like, well, what are you doing? And it's like, well, I cried after sex. I told him I loved him on date two, all of these things. And Andy's like, you are a walking red flag. So, but in a very supportive <laughs> way. So she's like, I'm just going to write an article about like a dating guide in reverse and right. the things not to do to drive men away. And so later that night, they decide to go out. It happens to be the same bar. Oh, no. Sorry. Before this, the two Judys come to the meet office. With, they meet with 
the the boss at Composure because they want to buy ad space for the advertising agency. Right. And that's where they're introduced. And that's where Michael Michelle's character is able to kind of con Ben later on because he knows and she knows Andy is writing this article and she sets him up. I hope they invite her to the wedding. Just saying. <laughs> she deserves it. <laughs> so we're at this like lounge and it's like a restaurant bar and this happens a lot in New York like there are spots after work especially if you're in like the financial district or in certain areas like there are places that are going to be packed and you know this is a place you can go to to find men essentially Mm -hmm. I miss those days we don't have that (laughs) here (laughs) <laughs> unless I've got unless I'm looking for a sugar daddy and where his boat is docked that's that's about a, as good as it gets here <laughs> and Andy looks so cool in this scene like I love her gray oh. dress and she's just got this like glowy makeup on and I talked to Ronnie Spector who's the makeup artist for the film and she said that was very intentional they wanted to like make her look very cool very like chic this like working girl very professional but had this a little bit of warmth and just that like very natural kind of cool girl edge to her which you'll see shifts later on <laughs> Yes. I, and I love that our clothes shift with this kind of character yes. she's playing. And then you can always see that her clothes kind of reflect whether she's being authentic Andy versus when she's being the crazy, crazy Andy, M- yes. Michelle-esque Andy version of herself. Yes. And- she goes like matchy, matchy, super, super feminine and like really girly. They took all the makeup, like very pastel. So like she starts wearing pinks and purples and like they even change the texture of her skin. If you look like, so she's super glowy in scenes where she's like regular cool Andy. And then they like really powder her up for more uptight Andy. So it's, it's fun to like see that. And, that, and they really did use that as a way to sort of separate the two characters, which I think is really fun. If you think about it, though, the two versions of the character, it's almost like the male gaze and the female gaze. Mm -hmm. So the male gaze, cool Andy is like, I like sports. I'm too cool to like worry about a guy like everything that a guy would find to be cool. And then everything that is like the anti Andy, the non cool Andy is just like a girl being a girl, you know, it's weird. Like I never thought about it, like how they were messing with my brain to think, oh, I've got to be cool girl. I think yes. they talk about this whole premise and gone girl a few totally. years later. The cool but, girl trope. Yes, yeah. but it definitely is. I didn't even think about it until you said that. Yeah. 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 And they bring that to life through the makeup for sure. Yes. They do. So Ben finds out that the Judys are meeting with their boss the ad exec. And so he kind of crashes their meeting. And this is when Michael Michelle's Judy sees Andy across the bar. Why are they both named Judy? (laughs) Why? It's real laziness is what I say. (laughs) It's real lazy. Also, isn't her co-star, I'm blanking on her name, shoot. It's um, she's like, she was a a major fashion model. So to me, it really reminded me of like the Emily Blunt Giselle pairing in, in Devil Devil Wears Prada. Prada. Yeah. Yeah. I was she in head over heels as well. She was. Yeah. So uh, essentially Michael Michelle's Judy sees Andy across the bar. No, she's scoping out dudes to write this article about and so she's like hey ben let's make a deal you bring this girl to the party convince her to fall in love with you in 10 days and the campaign is yours and ben's like no problem yeah i, I mean this. ben is pretty cocky even before she sets him up with this that mm-hmm. like he can make any girl fall in love with him but it's matthew mcconaughey so it's really believable but he is <laughs> really and cocky. i feel like if there were if it was any other actor saying these lines, you would just be like, oh, I can't stand yeah. him already. Yeah. And so it's gross. Matthew McConaughey. And you're like, yeah, you yeah. can. I believe you. <laughs> 100%. So Andy and Ben meet. Their meet cute is the single word combo that they have. And so he essentially is like, want to get out of here. And they go to for lobster dinner. 
He says yeah. hungry and she says starving. When they get outside, Leaving. she's thinking there's like a car, but he has a motorcycle. She goes with she still goes with the flow. She's still cool girl Andy. Cool girl Andy. But how later on when he makes her like the lamb, right? And she starts crying and saying that she's not a meat eater. And I'm just thinking that bitch ate a whole damn lobster in front of you. Like what? Did maybe she's a pescatarian? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But he could have like called her out on it. Like he just wanted to appease her. He just had to get her to the party. That's that was his whole goal. If he didn't have this bet, what how quickly do you think he would have stuck it in with Andy? Like, what thing do you think would have been like he's like, all right, I'm peace out. I can't do this. Because I kind I mean, of feel that's, like, that's a really good question. It's I a really good question. I think he would have still stuck around after the Diet Coke. I yes. still think that he would have stuck around. What is the uh, next thing she does? Probably, I mean, even the dog thing. She comes to his job. I think he would have looked, overlooked the dog thing because she gave him the idea for frosting. Yes. Yes. So I think he would have like made a contingency again in his brain about that. I think um, it would have been the poker, the poker game. Yeah, the probably. poker game. Well, or the family album. <laughs> which that was like diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like the family album was crazy, but when he when his mother called his house and she was like, "Oh, let me talk to her." Like this was before I want to say you could like really Google someone and find yeah. out like how the hell did she get his mother's phone number? And That's then hitch level of, of it sleuthing. Is. <laughs> this movie did give me a lot of hitch vibes. I don't know if it was because it was New York or what their chemistry, it, it felt similar, but that was another journalist. Yes, you're right. I'm telling you, they were trying to set us all up to be journalists back in the 2000s. So uh, yeah, they go out to dinner. They they converse. They find out a little bit about one another. Andy asks Ben some questions. They go back to Ben's house. He he goes into player mode and starts lighting all the candles. He plays the 50s. Hot and hurt here. Oh, yes, with Nelly. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, with the Nelly. It was so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> and then he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Ben. Wait a minute. We that's need sl- like, right. sl- slow it down. And so then that's when we get Al Green. Like that's any better. That's still setting the mood that we're about to like get it on. Oh god. And then she she's in the bathroom rummaging around his medicine cabinet cabinet like you do. And then she comes out. She wants him to come to the bed. And for some reason, his rebuttal is come sit with me on my dresser. (laughs) (laughs) And like she like really goes for it, making out with him. But he's like, let's take it slow. But then he is it's confusing. But there is a part when she gives her keys, I, I remember watching this over and over again, and it it just till this time it finally clicked. But she, before they leave the original bar they met at, she gives Michelle her keys, and oh. I was like, "Why? Like, bitch, how are you getting home? Do you live to get like?" I was confused, but it's because she purposely leaves her purse at Ben's house, so one that they have a reason to like reconnect. And two, so he could find the next tickets. But here's my question. When, after they like make out and she's like, I'm I'm going to go home and they're like, we'll talk later, blah, blah, blah. How'd she pay for that cab? No idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> how'd she pay? Like, was Michelle at her house? Like, maybe, was, I don't know. What was the plan? Like, I, I, I'm confused. How are you paying for this cab? You have nothing. Thing maybe she grabbed this. like enough cash and put like, it where there's no pockets in that that just, dress she probably like her doorman probably helped her maybe you're right but maybe. i did danielle i had the same exact <laughs> he thought bizarre. i i wrote in all caps oh that's why she gave michelle <laughs> the keys 
took me t- 20 years to figure that out put the I'm pieces just together figuring that out. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's a rom-com right I know I get that but like I'm not leaving my purse at no man's house like no especially way. not with playoff tickets in it and not because the first what, time we're meeting either yeah but yeah sorry yeah because what any other dude is like shit I found Nick's tickets <laughs> I'm not calling this chick right. and who who's going to do me what favors so that we can go like, cause he totally could have like, think about it. He could have gone to the next game and then like, finally just say, Hey, your purse is here because he could have been like, I didn't look in your purse. Like yeah. what was the guarantee that he was going to look in her purse? Oh, but she was dead set. That <laughs> was, that was the, the thing because she's at the office is this where she was eating the burger? She's yes. eating the burger. So we already know she's she's like a huge meat eater. Yeah. The like literally says they left, they always leave off my bacon. I'm like, was that necessary? We see her. I guess <laughs> maybe we would confuse it for a veggie burger question mark. <laughs> but so they're eating and he deliver he has a hundred white roses delivered. And then immediately calls. And so that's when she's like, well, I guess you can come with me to the Knicks game. And then she's like, Yahtzee, I got him. I do like it that he admits that he he saw the tickets. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. Like he's not trying to hide it. Well, Um, and he he did not want to go into her purse. And so Adam (laughs) Goldberg's character, Tony, launches his himself across the, the, <laughs> the desk and like knocks the purse off so the contents spill out so they weren't snooping they were just picking up her things and putting them back in the purse yeah okay which i mean you ever ask a man to get something out of your purse you're you're being brought the entire fucking purse that's like, true even my husband, I'm like, it's just in there. You know exactly where it lives. And he's just like, oh, you can't find it for me. They feel like there's a bear trap if they put their hands in there. <laughs> their hand is going to be gone. There might be. <laughs> you know what? There's a chance. Could be. I got all sorts of stuff like Mary Poppins, like just digging in there. My favorite part of that scene is when Catherine Hahn says, you are just on a whole nother playing field. Yeah. <laughs> Because Andy is. She she, she got is. she got tricks. So now we're at the next game. Super into it. They're having a great time. Kiss cam happens. So <laughs> she tries to be coy, like on the cheek, and they end up kissing. And then she's like, okay. She does yes. flip the switch and she's yeah. like, <laughs> I'm parched. I need a I yeah. need a diet coke. And you could tell like how annoyed he is with this. And I love this scene so much. It like every time she switches it, switches it up and he's like wanting to pull his hair out. But in this scene, when he goes to get the Diet Coke and it, of course it's this old decrepit man who has to get the Coke. <laughs> and <laughs> when he grabs the Coke, he grabs it without a lid. I don't see this man put a lid on it. But he starts running with it. And then when he gets to Andy, it has a lid. I said, it doesn't oh, have a lid. It does have a lid. It does not. It has a straw, but no lid. 100%. 100%. Then how did he not spill that? <laughs> he did. It was much less full than it was when the old man gave it to him. He didn't maybe, care. He was maybe he I was thought missing I the saw action. Lid, but I really just saw more of the cup, the inside. Yeah, more of the cup and then the straw. Yeah, that none of that made sense. <laughs> also, a diet coke with no ice—that's gross. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent gross. And, and but and, I do love that she's like, it's not. <laughs> I bet it was diet coke, but I yeah. still sent him back. Yeah, because she keeps drinking it <laughs> after he runs back out. So he misses like the final play. And he's just like, he's real frustrated, but he's keeping his cool because he has to win this account. And so they decide to see each other the the next day. I do love when they're walking out. She's like, it's really too bad you missed it. I'm like, just taking that knife deeper, Andy. Gosh. (laughs) And then he 
she as she's getting into the taxi she's like are you as nice as you seem Ben and he's like no she's like good neither am I and gets in the taxi and leaves like why Andy just just it's in the because it's flirty like it this is like when we know it's cool Andy again when she starts yes like switching it up so the next day he's in Ben's in this huge like executive meeting at the firm and Andy's calling it's urgent this is when she starts calling him all the nicknames you know boo boo bear <laughs> and wanted to figure out what they were doing tonight and he just is trying to get her off the phone so he's like well we'll watch a movie and then she's like any movie my my choice yay and so she takes him to it's literally called a chick flick marathon <laughs> <laughs> and so they're watching sleepless in seattle and she's talking through the movie danielle I knew he, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Kat, Does Danielle talk in movies? You're a witness. <gasps> I'm attacked. Yes, I do. I'm not gonna lie. So when we did scary movie, what Brenda and that's me. I'm the stereotype. <laughs> I am the black female that talks throughout the movie. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't so- think I'm doing it, but I am. <laughs> I would be the gentleman behind them, like can't see, can't hear. <laughs> and I would be like, "You want to fight, bitch?" Like, so I will do the horrible thing and still be ready to fight if someone tries to check me on it. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, this scene was also one of the scenes that she improvised. So the line, "You can't." What is the line? I wrote it down. Who's um, got it? it? You can't is- be watching a movie about a girl and, like not think of make you can't, something you can't like be watching Ryan. a meg ryan movie and not be thinking of another girl That's and then it. the tom hanks line that she always wanted a guy like tom hanks she yes. kate hudson improvised that which love, love but she gets ben into trouble because the gentleman just trying to en- enjoy his chick flick marathon is very annoyed and she turns around and <laughs> says my boyfriend will pummel your ass first Haven't called each other boyfriend and girlfriend yet. Second, this dude is about eight feet tall and weighs probably like 350. This is date number three and she's already calling him boyfriend. Yeah. So they go out into the hall. When he goes out there, he's like, you can't talk to her like that. So he does stick up for her knowing that this guy is huge. But I do want you to, like, if you go rewatch... Look at Kate Hudson's face when she turns around. She says the line, like, my boyfriend will beat you up. But when she sees him, she kind of is, like, a little taken back. And then when he stands up, she's really taken aback. And Andy, you could tell, like, she does. She's like, you know what? This is taking it too far. Because she says to Ben, like, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) Guys, it's fine. So she does care about him yeah and then she is really concerned after that guy punches him in the face and (laughs) ben is just milking it for all it's worth and and he's like oh yeah and he's literally nuzzling his face in her boobs and she's like wait a minute you're fine which kate hudson braless all day in this movie yes and in that scene especially i was like oh and it was like a off the shoulder like could have easily with all that nuzzling had a a nip slip (laughs) yeah that's like that's why I think they were so comfortable with each other because like what you're gonna be rubbing up all on my boobs okay yeah I mean it is Matthew McConaughey so the next day she comes over to Ben's house this is when he is cooking lamb for her apparently it's his signature Dish. dish Real in the ladies in chicken. Oh my gosh. This scene is amazing. <laughs> so he makes his signature dish. She comes in. I love that she, so the scene is like my, my kink because she like does his whole bathroom. And so like, I like pause it. I was like, okay, what did she put in there? I'm like, okay, secret deodorant, Vagisil. Like it's, it, I think being a prop stylist would be the most fun just like the amount of stuff you could hide in there the the new bedspread all like lining up all the girls in the cd player gang's all here gang's all here (laughs) 
all the stuffed then, animals yes the stuffed animals oh my gosh I I love it and then going into and by the way Ben had a pretty good medicine cabinet before he had some Kiehl's products he had like a he had like it was sparse but it wasn't like a bar of soap he was doing better than some guys that you see in movies especially in that time period mm-hmm. yes yes and then we get the iconic song you're so vain very important to the film yes and I feel like when I was a kid I was like what does vain mean I didn't know I was like 12. <laughs> I love but a good everyone... Carly Simon track 100 yes yes a Carly so Simon good. shade track like yo that was like the first not a first but it was like one, a, a very classic diss track before we got into like mm-hmm. rap music because it's about it for the youngins let me explain Carly Simon is a musical legend and she actually sang the song allegedly about Warren Beatty look up pictures of Warren Beatty when he was younger that man was fine mm-hmm. but he was also a hoe bag I'm just gonna put it out there I don't think there's a clean <laughs> way to say it he was dating everybody and their mama pretty much and things didn't go well for them so she wrote this diss track essentially about him so and she said you probably think this song is about you don't you <laughs> it's that vain. and that is a history lesson for our gen z listeners thank you <laughs> so good <laughs> <laughs> so but then well. I love that she won't eat the dinner so she makes him go to this like vegan spot which is so funny and I feel like again such a like trope of like the cool girl trope like she a guy wants a girl that eats burgers but stays super thin but looks super and drinks beer but like looks amazing doing it and so it's like this trope of going to this vegan restaurant like he would never normally go there I love the waitress love the waitress <laughs> Does it look like I know the Knicks score? (laughs) (laughs) And I love that he's like looking for a TV and can't watch the Knicks game. And Andy's like, I got to go to the bathroom. And she is in the back with the the cooks and stuff like that, eating. It's not a burger, but she's eating meat. It it looks like a burrito, yeah, like a beef burrito or something. (laughs) And watching the Knicks game, like shouting. And then when they get back to the apartment later, he's watching the highlights because the game is over. Yes. And she's like, I can't believe you missed that shot. And <laughs> like almost blows her cover because Ben's like, what do you, how did you know that? And she's like, oh, he always misses the shots from the top of the key. And he's like, he never misses. She should have just said when she was leaving the bathroom, she heard like yeah. the guys in the back watching it. And yeah. like- that was it yeah but yeah she almost then, got caught there and then she but then she changed the subject by <laughs> trying to proposition <laughs> princess <laughs> sophia <laughs> it's so funny it's so <laughs> funny and ben is just like not nah, dog like you can't <laughs> no no that's not the name of it like and he comes up with all of these like really masculine names but then somehow throws Pearl the warrior king in there and she's like this moment in the movie reminds me of Anna Ferris when she's in house bunny yeah the way that she has to say people's names so that she can remember them (laughs) but he said (laughs) when he says crawl and when she (laughs) has she's like melanie you know (laughs) carrie (laughs) i'm gonna youtube that later that is so funny (laughs) it is the same it is (laughs) so he's kind of Kroll doesn't want to come out and play anymore because he was called <laughs> Princess Sophia. And so no, he's she... abdicated the throne. I love how I just took it to the end. I was like, that is amazing. But I love how she like makes it seem like she was trying to have sex with him and knew that doing this would turn him off. But in my personal experience, I don't think this would have turned off most guys. Like they would have been like, don't call it that, but let's do it. Like, I don't see a guy saying, "Mm, 
but maybe, maybe it's the, the whole bet time. thing where he's like maybe we just take our time like because if we sleep together too early it's not gonna work i guess yeah. he had a bad night too he had a pretty yeah, <laughs> he, did. he did have a bad night that that vegan <laughs> food was probably not <laughs> setting, setting well with him he probably uh, needed to use the bathroom <laughs> yeah he definitely did the pink the very pink bathroom oh my pink. god it was so like 70s 80s vibes in that bathroom I, I don't I know can't. why I had forgotten about fuzzy toilet seat <gasps> covers and then <laughs> she put one on and I was like oh yeah that was the thing my grandma had some <laughs> I you know now that I think about it it was you know like my mom had them in every color my grandma mm-hmm. had them and it, it just dawned on me that like we just don't use them anymore Mm-mm. and when I bought my house it was not something I bought I don't know when it phased out I don't know who made the, de- the executive decision that we weren't <laughs> doing it anymore but like we even changed it for Christmas we have a yeah. Santa we have a full <laughs> ass white Santa Claus fucking head <laughs> That's that you put on uh, <laughs> toilet seat. I had to see if mom can find it because that shit is hilarious. I feel like we might have stopped because of how unhygienic the whole idea of it is. You're right. But it was very festive. It, it was. was. Do you guys um, remember those toilet seats that were like really squishy? Yes. yes. They would always tear after a while. I yes. didn't like it. It made me feel like fat when it would <laughs> rip. And I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> I just feel like toilet culture has changed so much. So much. We could do a deep dive into <laughs> toilet culture. Like those dolls that your grandmas used to like crochet that sat to over put the toilet paper yes. rolls. <laughs> yes. This is also when she brings over all of the stuff, the love fern is also introduced yes. into, I don't know how many times I have told my husband, like when I go away for a while and come back and a plant is really sad. I'm like, our love burn, you let it die. <laughs> I would be the killer too. too. I am not good with plants. It's real bad. <laughs> it's real bad. <laughs> so they end the night and she's like, take care of our love burn. And then he's kind of thinking through next steps. So he runs, meets her in the mm-hmm. elevator and is like, can I see you tomorrow? And so she's like, yeah, sure. And then <laughs> she's they- so annoyed that like he keeps on trying yes. to not end this. She's like, I don't know what the hell's happening. So the next scene is he's talking to his friends at the office and she shows up with <laughs> <laughs> the full the- Burberry fits. <laughs> Which I I love, like, I don't know why he would have been annoyed by that, but then their new addition to the family, that dog (laughs) is a dog, a a dog that only a mother would love kind of look. They had a deleted scene about this, this too. They like, she went with Catherine Hahn to pick out the dog (laughs) and they go to like this spot in the West village and they find the dog and they're like, oh my God, it's perfect. (laughs) And he, I feel like the dog had anxiety. It did. Yes. Poor thing. He grew, he grew on me after a while. It's like, oh, he's so cute. But at first I was like, oh, what is that? (laughs) (laughs) It was a Chinese crested. She named him Pearl the Warrior King, and he has a little Burberry sweater on. She has, is it a scarf or yes, is it the like shirt? Like a little necktie. Yeah. Like an then thing? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Scarf. And then she buys Ben a shirt. I'm like, that shirt alone was like an $800 shirt. She better. She, she pulled it from the closet at work. You know it. <laughs> she did. <laughs> And she's, so and, whole, and she didn't, she expensed it for sure. Yeah. And so she's like, this is our little family. And he, and his friends are just like, <laughs> what's going on? And there's a throwaway line in here because they are like brainstorming different words for like diamond and like things that could be associated with diamonds. And so Ben says glitter and Tony says that's Thayer's favorite movie. And Thayer, like, just real quick goes, it's it was very, it was underrated. <laughs> Which we love because we just covered glitter. You just yes. did glitter. Yeah. 
So there was a little glitter shout out in this movie. Which I love that it was a positive shout out too. Yes. Yes. It wasn't at the expense of glitter. Hashtag justice for glitter, (laughs) y'all. So Kroll is not putty trained, so he immediately pees on the pool table that's in the office. Um, I I do love that later on when he he pees on the felt of the poker table, she goes, "Mm, maybe is grass I don't know <laughs> why that line makes me laugh so hard I I called it out too because I was like <laughs> that's a really cute little clever thing to say it is it's so good and then this is when Ben tells her about poker night it's boys night blah 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 and so they they won't be seeing each other tonight and as they're leaving he's like oh look at Kroll's necklace he has more ice than Liberace and Andy comes back with it's just a little frosting and that's what kind of light bulb Ben's like frost yourself and so that's what he which is not a good thank you thank you because (laughs) as a marketer I was like the hell is this when he goes to pitch this like he goes and interrupts his boss's meeting to tell him about this fun like phenomenal idea frost yourself like it just felt like the line for the Santa Claus three (laughs) that's what it felt like well and the girls are like no like that's not a thing we don't know and and he's like no this is it this is the winner (laughs) yeah the box is good it's the horrible horrible I would have like I would have gotten told to go get some more ideas that's not working and they took that idea to the end of like mrs delauer being like who needs trust men? trust yourselves and i'm like i'm not I'm, i would not buy i that. have never related to a character more than her <laughs> <laughs> mrs delauer she is who i aspire to be okay i love that. I love this for you. <laughs> I want a diamond air CEO, whatever he is, who is obsessed with me, one. And two, I want to flirt with men like Matthew McConaughey. And then on top of that, I want to be in the commercial. Like, I want her life. <laughs> she I was want... probably like, I don't care what the campaign is as long as I get to say the line. I just want to so like <laughs> lay my arms out there and just unapologetically so rich I don't give a damn like I want to wear a red fascinator lace, that's all feathers lace, like <laughs> prince inspired outfit because that's what it was giving me I just I want I want it like she was she was fabulous she was head to toe yeah and I was wrong they can't meet tomorrow night because of the the boys night so tonight or later that day Andy shows up at his house and this is when she has the photo (laughs) album and she has photoshopped them together. Those kids, (laughs) the faces on those kids are in the photo album. There's pictures of their faces composited together and it looks like they are brother and sister (laughs) in real life and had children. And this is the outcome. This is a, a product of incest. That's how kind of not great these children look unfortunately it's 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 interesting to say the least she is really in her crazy bag a hundred percent in this scene and this is when Ben's mom calls now my question is Ben's mom if if someone called my mom and was like I'm dating your daughter for like four days can you send me some pictures of like Where's the critical Ben's, thinking here? Ben's mom is desperate. He's never brought a girl home. She's so sweet. She is. <laughs> also, when I was in junior high, I thought Staten Island was like some magical vacation <laughs> spot based on this movie. It I is tell, not. I can yeah. tell you this. As a New Yorker, as a, <laughs> it's on my birth certificate situation here. I never, I've been to Staten Island maybe twice, not of my own will. and the seven years that I lived in New York I never went there is nothing there for me and I'm sorry if you're from Staten Island I know you've got a culture a history whatever not a part of it sorry (laughs) 
There's I think it's there. great. I just, I literally thought that it was like this amazing magical place based on this movie. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to <laughs> vacation in Staten Island. <laughs> it's wow. like the Catskills or something. Yes. Like I'm just going to go or the Hamptons. Yes. I'm going- you got bamboozled, cat, And I'm sorry I for did. that. I got bamboozled. <laughs> and when did you figure out Staten Island was Staten Island? I think, well, so first it was like Pete Davidson and Colin just like sort of introduced me to what it really was and then I went and I liked it I had a lot of fun it was fun to sightsee it just wasn't it wasn't like the movie with like the soundtrack like feels like home to me it wasn't that (laughs) well (laughs) top things that came from Staten Island Wu-Tang Clan yeah this this move Ben from this movie Ben yes those two guys from Saturday Night Live and the fairy yeah top five (laughs) <laughs> and the ferry and, and, is still the best way to see the Statue of Liberty yes. I stand by that we we did that when I when Jackie came me Jackie and her sister went to New York and we did the ferry yes it is the most efficient and best way to see it 100% it is yep I don't know what else came from Staten Island <laughs> god honest truth so we're, um, I'm a true hater <laughs> gonna put it out there cat sorry oh, no i love it <laughs> hey everyone i'm simone and i'm bria and we're from roll call a podcast where two friends gush over movies and follow an actor's journey from their early years through their blockbuster hits each season bria and i embark on an imdb deep dive through the career of a different actor oh but wait does that mean you watch every movie yes that means every movie Our first season, we watched every Jennifer Lopez movie, and our second season, we'll focus on Will Smith, and we hope you join us on our journey through his career, highs, and lows. So follow us at Roll Call Pod on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and on wherever you get your podcasts. So the thing I want to know is why did... Ben's mom share the fact that he wore diapers until he was five. She just seems like one of those Southern moms who just start talking <laughs> and loves their son and telling cute stories, but she knows Ben, right? Like when, when Andy goes to the house and like, he always wins bullshit. Like he he's got an ego and that's what's so great about your family. Like to keep you grounded. They always tell the embarrassing stories. Mom loves to tell the story about Daniela full of jello and the, the brownie incident of fourth oh, grade. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So I guess Andy and Ben weren't supposed to hang out that night. This is kind of in the afternoon. And and Ben's like, oh, I have to go back to work, blah, blah, blah. He just needs some space and time <laughs> after the events of the day. <laughs> and Andy's like, oh, that's such a shame. I got tickets. And he's like, oh, you got tickets? Never mind. My question. If he is such a, a Knicks fan, shouldn't he know the Knicks schedule and know when and where they're playing? I feel like there the was a Knicks time. game. And they, was they it at out, the same? Yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. Because they all come out at the same time. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, who doesn't want to see a Celine Dion concert? Right? Right? I, I would have gone. Loved. I would have had like a print like a red mark on my chest trying to like (laughs) the whole time like I want her to know I'm with her in this (laughs) so Ben was bamboozled went to Celine Dion and I feel like there had to have been a deleted scene with the pink t-shirts I know Uh, that they're wearing cap sleeve t-shirts and his I didn't see a deleted scene but I I completely agree with you I like need to see that scene (laughs) Yeah, like they're wearing matching t-shirts and it's pretty precious. And so then the next day he's, she's talking with her, her friends and she's like, this guy is not cracking. Like, I don't know what to do. I can up the baby talk. I'm out of ideas. (laughs) And, and the, not Michelle, the other friend is like, well, what are you doing tonight? And she's like, oh, it's guy's night. They play poker. I'm not going over there tonight. And she's like, well, you should probably go over there tonight. And so this like, is where Andy he really should have no peace. That's pretty much what her friend is like. You can't, you can't let him have a guy's night. You know, yep. I love this. I love this advice, by the way. 
This is when Andy ramps it up to 11. (laughs) (laughs) What bothered Y2K Jackie continues to bother current day Jackie (laughs) is when she makes him blow his nose. Oh my God. That part is gross. And the friend's name, by the way, is Jeannie. Oh, thank you. Which both Andy's friends, Michelle and Jeannie, are named after the authors of the book that this movie is based on, which Ah. I didn't know it was based off of a book until... I was watching the very beginning when he rolls in on his motorcycle and I see based on the book and I was like, what book? <laughs> but it's yeah, like I didn't a, know until now either. A graphic novel, I think. What is it called? Sorry, Jackie. I, it's I just, called How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. It's How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, The Universal Don'ts of Dating. It's based on a comic book. Who would have, now I want to find it. I want to read it. Yeah. Me too. Sorry, can do Continue. a dramatic reading. <laughs> yes. um, so this is when all hell breaks loose. Andy comes whirling in. She replaces all of their snacks with like cucumber <laughs> sandwiches and celery and carrot sticks. She immediately tells them, "Buy." She doesn't even say like, "Hey, can you put your cigars out?" She's just like coughing and like. <coughs> 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 yeah out of Excellent. control and then someone alludes to the fact that she's crazy <laughs> someone whispers it and she like i think someone goes like the like makes yes. the like motion like the circling your finger motion around your ear and that's when she throws the celery and carrot sticks which was improvised by kate hudson and nobody knew she was going to do it so you can see the guys literally jump because they're scared it's 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 a lot it is (laughs) so and so this is when finally like ben has had it like i can't do this anymore (laughs) they break up and then she's like going to like leaving the building and his friends are like you're gonna lose this account you need to reel her back in you only got four more days you can do this and so ben Instead of like taking the stairs in the, (laughs) in the building, climbs down the fire escape. There's no way he could have done it as fast as he did it. Like, I feel like anybody would have fallen, but when he takes that last drop on the ladder, that scared me. And I feel like he almost got hurt doing it too. Like you could hear the thump when it hits the floor. Like it, I feel like he hurt himself. (laughs) But it, he's like, hey. He's like, let's do counseling. Yeah, they are therapy. <laughs> they're, what, day six in this relationship, but they're going to couples therapy. And he, he, you can tell he's trying real hard because he calls her sugar puss. <laughs> <laughs> and so she, <laughs> she agrees. And he's like, oh, Thayer has a really good guy. And she's like, no, I got someone. And so they show up and it's Michelle. (laughs) I love they go straight to Michelle's house too. Like they don't even try to find like another place at all. (laughs) I love when they open the door and she sees Michelle and she hasn't seen her in costume yet. And her face is (laughs) hilarious. Oh and my so th- what comes of couples therapy is all the therapist suggests that Ben is ashamed of Andy. <laughs> and so to prove that he is not ashamed of Andy, they take a trip to the magical land of Staten Island <laughs> to <laughs> meet his family. <laughs> and this is when Kat put her rose colored glasses on. <laughs> it's like, I want to go there <laughs> and fall in love. Like, I bet you were telling your friends, like, when I move to New York, I cannot I'm going to meet a guy. I can't wait to meet a guy from Staten Island. And yes. It's almost like in Coming to America, when he believed all the good women were from Queens because the (laughs) name (laughs) The name is Queen. Yeah. (laughs) He was right, though. I lived Mm. in Queens for a little bit. It's true. So now we're in Staten Island. We meet his family and they're like kind of kooky and lovable. And his mom is just the sweetest thing ever. So and sweet. you can tell he really is connected to his family. He is yeah. very engaged. He 
he just greets everyone warmly. They're so excited to see him. Mom says he's never brought a girl home. I'm so excited. They play bullshit out on the, the <laughs> patio. But the way they play bullshit, like I was watching that, they would just pick up the cards they threw in. But I thought you're supposed to pick up all the cards unless I missed it. Okay. So I was like, they're not playing right. <laughs> Secondly, it's amazing to me that almost every role Matthew McConaughey has played somehow, some way he is playing a Southern guy. Like this movie takes That's place true. in New York and he still has an accent. But my question is what happened to everyone else's for the exception of his mom? His mom has a pretty heavy Southern accent, but the dad, not so much. The sister, I was like, because it always bothers me about this movie. And I was really listening. His sister has no accent. His brother-in-law, nothing. Uncle, nothing. But it's just him and his mom. So riddle me this. What happened to their accents? I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> no idea. Did you guys notice that? Or is that just me? I never really I thought about yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't really clock. I didn't really clock that. But you're right. You're right. Sorry, it just it, it's <laughs> that one thing that I'm like, wait a minute. It very much fits the character of him and it his does. mom. Yeah, so that makes sense to me. But yeah, Other than I that. loved, I loved, I love Andy's outfit. I'm with the mom. I'm like, I want that in my size. I thought she looked so cute. And then I love when they go and learn how to ride the motorcycle. It's like this part of her, like the cool Andy is peeking back through. Yes. And she's starting to fall in love. And so she can't, you know, keep up this charade as much. And she, and you see the like guilt, like every time they have a connection, you see the guilt kind of, I would say more on her side than his. Yeah. He doesn't seem to have much guilt at all. Yeah. But I think at this point in Staten Island, like when they come back and he has plans with her for the 13th, which was like, when I was a teen, I just thought that was the most romantic thing I'd ever heard. (laughs) I think that his bet allowed him to kind of like move on and still Maybe. date her if he wanted to, but hers has to end in driving him away. So that's right. I think why she feels the guilt more. Yeah, I think he's just like, oh, I had this bet, but I happen to like want to be with her still anyways. I yeah. like her cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs mentality. She keeps me going, keeps yes. me on my toes. And who doesn't want hot, steamy sex in your mom and dad's uh, house bathroom. right <laughs> so now we're back from staten island <laughs> <laughs> the magical world of staten island we are back to reality and he's dropping her off he when- invites her to the party and then he says i want you to go as my girlfriend oh they go to the ball the ball. Oh. This is very important because <laughs> this is what allows for the yellow dress. And yes, the yellow right. dress is so iconic in this scene. It was designed by Karen Patch, who was the costume designer for the film. Almost everything else that Andy wears is designer. I'm but glad. and there's a lot of like there's a lot of conflicting reports about who designed it. Thank but you. But according I, to I I'm, I'm sorry, like we got something out like Herrera. Carolina Herrera. Yeah. Okay. Clear I this think up. Kate sorry. Hudson said that in an interview. And I don't know if they weighed in on the design of the dress, but according to Karen Patch in an article for Nylon, she designed the dress specifically for the Harry Winston 84 karat diamond. So the diamond necklace is real. A lot of people get it confused because there's also a Tiffany diamond necklace that's very similar. The one that like Beyonce wore, Lady Gaga yeah. wore, et cetera. It's different from that. It's the Harry Winston one. It is 84 carats. And so they wanted to design a dress that lived up to that. So they had a bunch of different designs like that they might've gone with. There was a mossy green option. There was a midnight blue option, which I can't even imagine. <laughs> because then when they put on the yellow it was like oh it has to be that it like brings out the the yellow in the necklace the gold in her hair and then Karen told me something really interesting in this scene she still kind of has to be crazy Andy she's not fully back to cool Andy so they put her in a, a bright pink lip that they don't make anymore it was like an Anna Sui lip color that's no longer around oh, wow. uh, but they put her in a bright pink lip to kind of keep that little bit of crazy Andy in her so she doesn't completely transform back which I think is really fun 
but Karen had something really interesting to say about this yellow dress and how, and there's a really great article in Nylon. If you haven't read it, it's about like the iconic yellow dress or yellow suit. Like you think of the yellow suit and clueless that Cher wears. Yeah. Or like so many yellow moments in TV and film because it's so unexpected and it's so infrequent. You don't see it as often as like red or black. It really becomes this like powerful statement making color that's very iconic and something that you remember for years to come. So it puts like a spotlight on the character. It's very much like the pinnacle moment for her in this film, which I loved. So I was really excited about that she, she really does stand out like you look at everybody in these scenes and there's no one else that pops like she does and what I love is that they were able to do something very simple with her hair as well yes. like it's kind of pinned up but and it looks you know it's cute but it doesn't really you're not paying attention to it like the dress itself and the necklace are the main focus focal points but that back of that yeah. dress And I love when he comes to see her, like to pick her up, how he looks just like enamored with her. But I also love that she does that spin so he can't, like you can see the back of the dress as well. Mm -hmm. Just every time you look up any list of the best dresses from that time period or even now, like uh, best dresses from movies, the most iconic, this one always is on the list. Yeah. 100%. And it's so timeless. Like it, it will always, it's that silk 1930s silhouette. The like really low back definitely is like the 2000s, like the yeah. black cleavage yes. moment, which definitely <laughs> in 2000s, that's also coming back. But no, I, I loved it. And then they also spent a lot of time on her skin. They wanted her to look very in love, even if she doesn't realize she is. Right. So they layered like four different blushes on her to like give her this like flushed look of love. All these little details to create this sort of pinnacle moment I I do love that when they get there it's almost like both of them are trying to say that they're not in love with each other yes. but they're very much in love with each other also B.B. Newworth's character has this amazing diamond tiara and I think she's also wearing a necklace in this scene and I would have, if I couldn't wear Kate's, I would have been (laughs) totally fine with wearing hers. There was an estimate of over $14 million worth of jewels lent to this film. And Lana's dress, B.B. Newworth, was by Chanel. And her diamond tiara was real as well. I don't know who they asked to let everybody loan out that jewelry, but that's a lot of money. I think that most of it came from Harry Winston. Oh, wow. Which is why he got the mention in the film. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And the necklace that Andy is wearing, she wears with the yellow gown. It is the Isadora diamond named after Isadora Duncan. The 80 carat yellow diamond in the necklace was designed by Harry Winston and it's worth $6 million on its own. I just love when she's like, is that the Isadora diamond she's wearing? And (laughs) she's like running out. (laughs) And she laughs like it's funny. (laughs) Bitch, that's you for money. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And also Ben's tuxedo for the gala was custom made by Brioni. I think I'm saying that right. Gorgeous. He did look sexy. Very good. I'm sure he looked good without it as well. As a kid, when I watched this scene, like it was kind of cringy, but as an adult, like having been to events like that, like your boss is at and that your coworkers are at, like I was like, my skin was crawling during this scene (laughs) way more than when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think that I just realized like the weight of what was happening and like they both were just being completely mortified. It was a super important moment for both of them. And yeah, it just felt like so, so cringy. So embarrassing. I'm like, you guys are so out of it. Like, I don't know how both of them didn't lose their jobs. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. And to keep the audience up to date, what ends (laughs) up happening is Ben 
talks to his boss and his boss is like, you know what? I'm going to check and see if this woman is in love with you. And then Andy's boss, unbeknownst to Andy, ends up talking to Ben and not knowing, she doesn't know who the sucker is that Andy is writing the article about. So she like spills all the tea, which I'm actually surprised at because like, why? This is yeah. an exclusive article. Like, why are you just like throwing it out there? When Ben's boss goes to talk to Andy, he pretty much find like tells her like, you're in love. And she's like, no, but she's like, maybe. like in her head, you could tell she's like, oh shit, I am. Um, the Judys are like, hell no, because they're watching Andy talk to the boss and pretty much say, don't tell Ben that I'm in love with him or whatever. And they're like, we can't have this. So they send Tweedledee and Tweedledum, which are Ben's friends. And they tell him, tell them that like, you know, Andy's in on it and knows about the bet kind of situation. And so they go to go say like, hey, don't snitch to our boss kind of thing. And tell Andy everything not knowing she knows nothing so yeah. she finds out and Ben finds out and then Gosh. Marvin Hamlish <laughs> Oscar but, winning like composer he makes a cameo so he's obviously playing all of his hits but these two morons they get on the stage to sing you're so vain by Carly and they sound horrible but we all know Kate Hudson actually does have a beautiful voice so Again, the range of her acting to pretend like she sounds just ridiculous. And she gets mad because they're fighting on stage and then she runs out. And this is the part where my idol and the diamond company's owner's wife is like, she's running out with the diamond. And so like all of these guys come out to like get Andy running away with it. And she doesn't even realize she has it. And they're, they're still fighting. And I love when the guy's like, just shut the hell up and give us the diamonds. Like... I'm surprised they didn't like tackle her because yeah, that is a lot of money to be running off with. So yeah, the two of them essentially are mad. They break up. I have a little makeup tidbit here too. Oh yeah. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, you, you got it. So for this scene, because she knew that Kate would be tearing up, they did her makeup like very strategically. So she obviously had like gold on her eyes and then she's actually wearing a Mac pencil that you is still available if you want to buy Ooh. it the mac teddy pencil in the in the water line but and she used non-waterproof mascara on the top lashes because she wanted them to be like really fluffy and like in love but then she had to use waterproof mascara on the bottom lashes because she knew that she was going to tear up and they didn't want any like black mascara tears Aww. so it's a very strategic little eye moment for andy because she's sad she's broken hearted yeah. And it's interesting because like how in this role, they wouldn't want the mascara to run, but in like when she's really doing like a comedic sad, mm -hmm. what she does in 200 cigarettes, like she, her makeup is a mess when she's crying. So it's, it's yeah. interesting, the difference, but this yeah. is more a stylized movie in comparison. So, and this makeup artist, Karen, she also, or sorry, not Karen, that's someone else that's a costume designer <laughs> Ronnie Spector the makeup artist also did she worked mostly with Kate Hudson with Kim Basinger and with Michelle Pfeiffer and she did Michelle Pfeiffer's makeup in Batman Returns with like the running makeup the <sighs> fact that she was able to breathe the same air as Michelle I Pfeiffer I, I there's not a lot of celebrities that I feel like I would literally pass out but I think I would probably cry on site if I saw Michelle Pfeiffer I don't know what it is maybe it's because like I've seen her from when I was so young like obsessed with Grease 2 and yes. everything she's been in and she's been in a movie with Harrison Ford so <sighs> she's amazing <laughs> but yeah I think what Ronnie said was like they wanted to keep her very obviously beautiful through the film and so it was either like this cool pretty look that was very dreamy or this like kind of scary pretty but like still mm -hmm. pretty but almost like scary pretty that she was like so pretty it was like almost too much right that it almost felt like, like a step for your wife yes. like I'm gonna be the perfect woman for you Benny yes. Boo Boo. Benny yeah. Boo Boo Bear. <laughs> That's funny because there's a deleted scene as well uh, here where she's going to save 
Kate and basically like bring her into work and Kate's super heartbroken about losing Ben. And But what, what you actually see in the movie is something similar where she's like, she's heartbroken. We didn't also talk about the fact that she like went to her editor in chief and was basically like, I can't write this article. I've really gotten to know this guy. And then she says, but like, I'm not your Girl Scout leader. I'm your boss. Right. And so many people painted her as the villain, but she like was just a badass woman trying to do her job. She had an amazing ad, like quota that she had filled. She had to get those pages in the magazine. You can't just like have a huge story be pulled out of the magazine. Those are ad Mm -hmm. pages that you buy. So she'd already done that. So the article had to run. She had to be professional. So then she writes this article and then you see Ben on the amazing Frost Yourselves campaign commercial set shooting. (laughs) (laughs) And his friend comes up and is like, just read this article. Just trust me and read it. And so he reads it for like two seconds. He like literally (laughs) skims it. He skims, like he reads the headlines. That's it. And he realizes that she's really in love with him. So he goes to her work and her love fern is there. He picks it up and she's not there. They're like, she's left. She has a, a interview in DC because she's decided to quit her job because her boss will let her write whatever she wants. Her boss and- did do a bait and switch on her. Like she's told her that she could write anything if she proved herself with this article. And she does prove herself. But then her boss is like, yeah, what I mean is like, you can't write anything political or uh, none of the things that she wanted to write about. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. like, I did all of this for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And so he sees the friend Catherine and is like, you owe me 300 bucks. Cause he realizes <laughs> that she was the therapist, which is great. And then he gets on a motorcycle and it's this like amazing scene of him chasing after her, looking in all the cabs for her blonde hair until finally he sees her on the Brooklyn Bridge and she gets somehow the cab to pull over on the Brooklyn Bridge. And they have this moment where she gets out of the car and he he challenges her about her new job in, in DC in this interview and whether she she's going there to run away because she could technically write about those things from New York. Right. And she's like, well, no. And she starts to walk away. And then he says, bullshit. Which is so cute. It's a magical Staten Island. (laughs) (laughs) And they're amazing family. And yeah, they realize that they love each other. And they want to live happily ever after with Curl the Warrior King. (laughs) I I love that he pays the cabbie and tells yes. him to go back to her house to drop off the stuff. Cause obviously he's on the motorcycle. He can't carry her, her luggage, right. but I'm just thinking to myself as a cabbie, that's some real trust, a New York cabbie to like <laughs> go back because you paid me ahead of time and I could sell whatever crap is in her bag. <laughs> she I'm does have saying. a lot of designer pieces. She so. does. Okay. Blowing off the interview is like, great idea like I I get I get like not needing to move but I do think that like a lot of people are like oh she chooses a guy in the end I don't think that's the case I think she's going to live in New York and write about these important issues and that going to DC was maybe like just shutting the door and not wanting to face her fears yeah however I just think like in a situation like that you should not bail on an interview you should still go to the interview right make a good relationship yeah, that's and, a really bad bridge to burn. Yeah. And the challenge could have been, well, well, Ben, you could go to DC with me. You know, yeah. right? You could, there's tons of advertising agencies there, but yeah. Very I true. will say this scene in even Y2K Jackie, I was in film school at the time. The worst soft focus yes. shot I have ever seen in my entire life. And it still bothers me to this day. Like it is such a perfect scene and to be ruined by botched cinematography. And I know it probably wasn't intentional and you got to use what you got, but like the soft focus in the scene, it just drives me insane. You know, why do you think it was so strong? The only thing I could either, they wanted it to look super ethereal and it just missed the mark or a setting was wrong like those are the Mm. only two things I can (laughs) think of because it's so bad and I I just it makes me so sad because it's such a good scene it's very memorable 
it the, is the soft focus. And yeah. it, it, I feel like when it's that memorable, it might not be a good thing. Yeah, exactly. I honestly don't remember <laughs> it at all. Like, I'm like, did we watch the same ending? Because I, I missed it. But I, I rarely notice this kind of stuff. So I'm pretty bad at that. Jackie's the one who's like, did you see the editing? I'm like, no. <laughs> I, I think that I would actually take a reboot of this movie. Wouldn't it be fun if it was like flipped? Yeah. Matthew McConaughey yeah, has fun. gone on record in, I don't know if it's many interviews, but an interview where he said he would love to do a, a sequel. He thinks that this movie really serves it up for a second movie I just find that interesting because I don't know what he thinks is served up because (laughs) what is pretty (laughs) tied up in a nice little bow yeah I don't I don't either maybe like their kids from the photo album (laughs) (laughs) like what could they be betting on now you know what could they maybe maybe we see they're getting ready to divorce each other and then they change their minds it has to be some sort of cat be, and mouse yeah, situation. Yeah. It can't like, like how to keep a how to keep girl. a husband in ten days. Yeah, yeah, in ten weeks or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. This doesn't make any sense. I think I would want to see it. I think I would want them in it in some capacity, but I would want to see a new couple that's yeah. young and is like in this new world that we're in now. Because I yeah. also think that's such that's such a part of what makes this movie so attractive and enticing as it's this pocket of time in the early 2000s and how yeah. dating was and so I think you would have to bring in like how things are now this movie like that vibes and chemistry if you really if you vibes. really think about it it's vibes and chemistry mm-hmm. because if you put any other two actors in here I don't know if it's as appealing as this was it's these two actors in particular and the time period yeah I don't know if you can get lightning in a bottle again in that same way. Because the story itself is a trope. Like we've seen it multiple times, you know? So, I mean, how many bet movies are we going to (laughs) see? But I think they should move on from this storyline and they just should team up and do another movie together because it's them. The two of them have great chemistry. Even though Fool's Gold was garbage, I'd still watch it because of them, you know? Yeah. I agree. Fool's Gold is kind of like their two characters in another movie when you think about it. Yeah. yeah. In a way, in a, in like a very distant way, but I did not. Yeah. I love this movie a lot. Yeah. Fool's Gold also. Yeah. That, I, and I was like, how many movies is he going to be doing out in the sand? We just saw Sahara. <laughs> like, when is this going to end? <laughs> it's not because Matthew McConaughey does what Matthew McConaughey wants. You're right. He was very um, tan through the early 2000s is. with all those sand movies. Yeah, I hope he's getting a, a melanoma check every year. <laughs> I'm sure that he is. I'm sure he's got a great derm. Because yeah. y'all, skin cancer is not a joke. Get checked. True. Even Black people. Yes. We, Bob Marley died yes. from melanoma on his foot because a lot of people don't check their feet and they don't put on the screen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wear yeah. your sunscreen every Wear day. Wear your sunscreen every single day every day that's a word and it helps you not age as fast it does look look at me and jackie we are 40 you would never know it you look amazing (laughs) (laughs) well that is how to lose a guy in 10 days any fun facts well i know there is one fun fact that i'm going to share because okay it's me because it's Um, friends it's friends yeah. related and I can't <laughs> not share it. I also did put the make a model, the model you did of the motorcycle, which I'm learning because Ken, Jackie's husband loves cars. So then now Jackie oh. is very observant of cars. Me, I'm like, it was a motorcycle. It was a yellow car. Jackie has to say the make a model. So yes. So I'll start with that. The motorcycle is a Triumph Bonneville. And my friend's fun fact, and I knew two out of the three right away what characters they played. I had to look up the third. So Annie Paris, who played Jeannie, Jean- is that her name? Janine or Je- Jeannie? Je- Jeannie. 
I'm just making up words. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Annie Paris. She was the one I didn't know off the not, top. Not Michelle. The friend that's not Michelle. The friend that's not Michelle. She plays the date that takes fries off Joey's plate and Joey doesn't share food. Right. So that's who she plays. That's so funny. I'm like, <laughs> now I see it. Yeah. The other two, I know Adam Goldberg plays crazy roommate Eddie when Joey moves out. And Thomas Lennon plays the identical hand twin when Joey is in Phoenix. <laughs> Which is funny because he also plays Matthew Perry's roommate yeah. in The Odd Couple. So they both, so both of Matthew McConaughey's friends in the movie play a roommate of Matthew Perry in a TV show, which is interesting as well. Yeah. But that was my little friend's fun fact. I, I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't know she was the Joey doesn't share food date. But <laughs> anyway, what else we got, Danielle? I do like that Catherine Hahn talked about her audition process and how she was, when she got to screen test with Kate Hudson, that she kind of told, like, she had to break the ice. So she told a joke about a horny summer <laughs> at a theater camp that they had both been to when they were kids and <laughs> also her phone was ringing while she was in the audition and so that it didn't throw things off she played with it and kind of like pretended it was a part of the scene and said something weird and hung up so her friend kept calling her and so her pants were like vibrating the whole time she's doing this scene but it worked because our girl got cast so she, she made it work but she was super nervous when she was auditioning with Kate Hudson. But they had great chemistry. They did. They really did. Matthew McConaughey almost wasn't cast in this because of his age. He was 10 years older than Kate Hudson. And so that was kind of a concern from a casting standpoint. I'm glad they went with their gut and cast him instead because, or cast him because, like Danielle said, I, I just don't think. It would have been the same. Yeah. It was actually Kate Hudson because of the age gap. They wanted her to feel comfortable, but she, at that time she was with her ex-husband and he was about 36 so that he was already older than her. And she's like, I don't care. So that's why they were like, okay, it's fine. I do also love that they play the theme of Sabrina and Breakfast at Tiffany's Moon River in the movie, which are Audrey Hepburn films. I love 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 Sabrina both versions the new and the old so that does give you that nostalgic feel of an old school romantic movie and I just love it it just puts you in you don't even recognize it I didn't even recognize they were in the movie until I read that and I was like oh my god that's right they are it's yeah this was Catherine Hahn's second movie she yeah. was in a movie called Flushed in 1997 and then this was her second movie so very then- early in her career Another movie that she was in that I didn't realize until rewatching it is The Holiday. Mm -hmm. She just randomly in a scene. Yeah. That's right. Um, So Karen Patch created the iconic yellow slip dress that she wears in the climactic ball, designed it specifically to highlight that diamond necklace that she wears in the scene. But then in the rest of her wardrobe, they wanted her clothes and labels to be very recognizable to kind of paint this picture of like a magazine writer. So YSL, Prada, Marnie, Narcisa Rodriguez, Marc Jacobs, they wanted it to be very recognizable. Oh, I noticed. So the name style and content of Composure magazine is like meant to be... cosmopolitan when she's at her desk she actually has cosmos on her desk you can like see cosmo magazine on her desk which i thought was really interesting i love cosmo is not a part of the Condé nast building so that would have been the hearst (laughs) building interesting Interesting. i do love a fake magazine i don't know what it is there's nothing more than i love than like movie props and like fake publishers or whatever so and I'm always say, interested to see the covers. Yeah. And I have to say that they were actually pretty ahead of their time in terms of some of their subject material, like yeah. doing an expose on nail salons, like way before the New York Times did. Yeah. He was pitching that. And then the beginner's guide to Botox, like in 2003, actually very much would have been like a beginner's guide. So I was, I was like, okay, they did some good research here. They actually, I can't remember what there was expose on a country that. Yes. And they were saying that was really timely because there was actually some real issues happening in that country, but I can't remember which one it was. Do you know, Jackie? 
I wrote it down. Was it Tajikistan? I think so. Yes. I believe- yes. Yes. And so yes. they were saying that's actually pretty timely because of they were having unrest in that during that time period. So yes. like you said, very ahead of the time. Yep. And in another deleted scene, I'm coming with all the deleted scenes. <laughs> in a deleted scene, she's backstage at a fashion show. And I think it's like the opening of the movie. It seems like the way that it's filmed, it seemed like kind of that montage. And she's doing like a how to, it was like some something really weird. It was like how to buy lingerie for under $50. And she's interviewing this fashion model and the model is from Tajikistan. And she, so she ends up like asking her two questions about like lingerie. And then she's like, oh, you're from Tajikistan. Like, what do you think about the peace treaty or, and then they go into this like whole and that, and then she comes back to her apartment. You see her like writing the story. It's way more like drawn out that whole article oh, that she writes. Super yeah. interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we get into our ratings and to see how we all felt now that we've rewatched it, why don't you tell everybody your social handle one more time, Kat, so that they can watch your sure. amazing videos. It's at Kat Quinn, C-A-T-Q-U-I-N-N. And that's, I'm mostly on Instagram and TikTok these days, but you can find me across social channels with that handle. And if you have any hot takes, questions, corrections, whatever, Hit us up at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. And I'm going to start with you, Kat. What would your rating be now that you've rewatched it? <laughs> Wait, do I have to go first? I have to think. <laughs> okay, well, I'll go. It's still a would buy for I me. I think, yeah. Same. I'm yeah, so same. excited. <laughs> say it's, it's a still a would buy it. I would it's... watch it again tomorrow yeah <laughs> oops I'm gonna go finish it because I still have more <laughs> <minutes left. laughs> well if you have opinions want to celebrate with us because how to lose a guy in 10 days officially made it into employee picks for 2022 or if you just have random feedback suggest future movies what you like to say have corrections for us blockbuster or video stories Favorite moments, hit us up at our quick drop 909-601 and MLF 909-601-6653. You can twat us at the Twitters or leave a voice message on our Anchor FM account for our international users, and you can be featured on a future episode. And this week we have a birthday announcement. I would like to say a very special happy birthday to my bro dog, my life partner, Shayla. Happy birthday. Thank you for supporting us and the podcast and always listening. She listens to every single episode and we absolutely adore you. Happy birthday. Thank you, Sheila. Happy birthday. Thanks for keeping Danielle on the straight and narrow when I can't. So appreciate you. And join us next week as we go medieval on your asses with the Heath Ledger movie, Night's Tale. So good. I can't wait to tune into that. I'm so excited because like <laughs> my absolute favorite Conley is going to be on the show and it's not Jackie, it's Johnny. <laughs> it's my little brother, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to a night still. I really am. I am glad he suggested that because that was not on the list of movies that I sent as suggestions. So love it. And as always be kind and rewind. <laughs>